with you. It's Wednesday, which means we have another awesome podcast to get you over hump day. I'm here with my co-host, Dan. Hello. Hello. And we're brought to you by ProQ, Barbecue Gourmet, Kamado Joe and Smokewood Shack, our awesome sponsors. ProQ is dedicated to providing you with quality smoking products with top-notch service and free advice for beginners to pitmasters. You can find them on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram under ProQ Smokers. So if you're thinking about buying your first smoker, wanting to upgrade or looking for some charcoal cabinet smokers, then check them out over at Max Barbecue. And Barbecue Gourmet is devoted to promoting real barbecue and supplying the UK and Europe with top championship winning barbecue rubs, sauces, marinades and accessories from the United States and around the world. You can find them on Twitter and online under Barbecue Gourmet. So regardless of how you cook, whether it's on charcoal, wood, gas or electric, the real taste of barbecue can be yours all year round. And Kamado Joe is renowned for build quality and innovation from smoking, roasting or searing. Kamado Joe is the premium ceramic grill chosen by Michelin star chefs and barbecue enthusiasts alike. Get that great barbecue taste and keep the moisture locked in. Check out kamadojoe.co.uk plus Facebook and Twitter. And on today's show, you're going to be putting up with us again. <laughs> <laughs> but we just wanted to do a... Uh, this is kind of like the the last opportunity to do an episode where people could learn about new things that they might want to get for Christmas and it not be too late to order them and get them in time for Christmas. So, yeah, so we're going to get it in there. Running towards the end of the week, sort of your last Christmas order dates from some of the major uh, sort of uh, suppliers. Mm. I mean, even even up to Amazon and stuff. So you're pretty yeah. much, uh, this is the last chance for us to try and uh, <clears throat> maybe encourage you to get involved with something that you hadn't thought about or or even something you have been thinking about maybe we can uh, help you make that decision mm. who knows mm. so we, we've got a little list of a few things that mainly things that we've like got this year and we've loved or things that we want to get and still love the look of them or we've tried them out and we would recommend you try them out as well so we kick off with a few few little items that we've got here so well the first thing I want to talk about is the the uni. Yeah, you you were over the moon with that when you first got yeah. that. You you brought that to the table really for us, didn't you? I yeah. saw it online a while ago, and I like recommended it to so many friends, and having not even had one, and then you went for it, took the plunge, and got one in. I think that it it really went back to that day at Marcus's when we were there with a, ah, yeah, a group of yeah, yeah. Oh, group of fellow barbecue enthusiasts, mm. and uh, sort of met and had a good old cook and. Uh, and Toby Butler brought one along, f- and uh, we all sort of had a little cook on it, had a little go on it, and it just really impressed me as a bit of kit. Really, really impressed me. I thought it was a fantastic bit of kit, really good fun, and uh, and yeah, I got home that night and ordered the one straight away, and uh, yeah, so yeah, I forgot that was where we like kind of got introduced to it. It was when we were, we met up with Marcus and a few of the guys up there, and we did a bit of a cook together, and then. We did some filming actually, and sorry, Marcus, I haven't uh, passed you the video yet, but we've got some good footage from some stuff that we did there, so we need to get that out there for people to see what fun we had on our day of cooking out at Country Wood Smoke Shack. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so well, yeah, so you, I uh, got mine. Yeah, you and, got it. Uh, and it was basically pizzas on the menu for the next like three weeks straight. We mm. just uh, tried different doughs and, and tried different recipes, tried different toppings, and we learnt loads, and it's really quick to find your feet on with the uh, the uni. Really, really quick to to get to grips with, and you put out amazing pizza pretty quickly. Like uh, thinking back to spending some time in Italy and and getting some wood fired oven pizza over there, it really, really, really you get such great quality pizza. Mm, it's got that real authentic flavour, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I really, really feel it does, mm. and. I feel it's super easy to achieve. I don't feel that you need to be any sort of pit master or or wood fired oven master to do it. I think it's mm. a really super cool thing. I think it's actually I think that's one of the coolest bits is that anyone can get involved. So as soon as you get the uni out, everyone wants to have a go. Super easy to use. They chuck their pizza in, it's good fun. Another great thing about it is again, like everyone can make their own base, stretch like stretch their own bases and and add their own toppings and yeah, and chuck their own pizza in, and it could be like it's just a really fun experience for everyone. Yeah, the kids like getting involved as well, don't they? We've I've done a few the kids' parties where they're making their own pizzas and lining them all up, and then going through the process of turning them around in the oven with them and stuff. And 
Everyone, yeah. everyone loves to get involved with it. I think it's awesome. 60 seconds. <clears throat> I find 60 seconds. I have a perfect pizza. Mm. If the oven's hot enough. Uh, yeah. A little bit cooler and you're looking at 90 seconds. But even that 60 seconds, if, that, if the oven's hot enough, then really that 60 seconds, you're not even mm. having to hit that. What, really. do you, what do you recommend Like when, from your experience using it? Do you think going hotter and faster is better? Or do you think... To, to be completely honest, I don't feel that you... What I find is 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 between the the levels of uh, the funnel, like the the funnel, yeah. the, like the, yeah, I don't know what's called, the, the, the like hopper, hopper bit that's that. it, the hopper. Uh, I don't find the the heat, the, the temperature of the oven is massively affected, like in huge amounts, by it. To mm. be honest, but what I do find is the amount of time you leave the oven before you start using it, mm-hmm. and the rest you give it between pizzas does affect it. So. What I find is if you leave it for a good 15, 20 minutes to get it hot enough, and I mean, I know 15, 20 minutes is nothing, but I know the temptations are there to like light it 10 minutes down the line. You're, you're looking pretty hot. You've got your laser thermometer in there and it seems hot. And you're like, let's just chuck one in. The temptations. But I really feel we'll wait that extra five minutes, wait for yeah. it to get super hot. And and then you're banging out pizzas and give it a little rest in between each pizza, maybe not like each pizza, but every couple of pizzas or so. Maybe give it a little bit of a rest to get back to temperature. Uh, I just think that that immediate stone, you just take the temperature out of the stone, I think, and you end up with a slightly worse base than what you could get from mm. a proper hot stone. Do you reckon it's worth like after you've taken your pizza out you've done your first one how long do you think you should like leave it to like, get the stone back up to temperature again do you think you lose much temperature on the stone each time i'm no expert but i i, I like to tend to even just one minute just mm. like i just think by the time that if what i personally like to do i don't like to make a load of pizzas up and then chuck them in one after each other i tend to make the pizza in between each time so yeah. basically what i'll do is is i'll hand stretch out the dough i'll then uh, I'll, well, I'll put the pizza in that I'm cooking. I'll then stretch out the dough, start putting toppings on, check the pizza, carry on putting toppings on, check the pizza. Pizza's done. Bring the pizza out. Let everyone dig in and then carry on making the pizza. Yeah. By the time you finish making your pizza, getting it ready and, and then chucking it in, your oven's hot enough again. So yeah. I don't like to, like sometimes we've basically made, like sat around a table all together at the same time and made like, Mm. eight pizzas a big group of us and then gone boom 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 eight yeah. pizza and i feel that i think when you get to like the fifth pizza ish it starts to like you start to really notice like the difference yeah, if they're one after the other like, you need to give it a bit of a <laughs> yeah and uh and then you get stuff like base splitting and mm. stuff like that and it's just a big nightmare so i think like leaving a little bit of time between each one's a a good a good practice to be honest mm-hmm. all right let's move on second yeah. I was gonna just before you moved on. I suddenly thought like that's the uni is like an awesome present. I think get someone to buy it for you or buy it for yourself as a little treat. But also there's probably some little like extra bits that go alongside it, which are probably cheaper presents and things that are really useful. I know you've got the infrared thermometer, like something like yeah. that. We didn't write it down as a thing, but now we're talking about uni i think that's almost like a must-have really isn't yeah, it? yeah toby i mean toby butler does a cool little like slicer which is like a two-handed sort of slicer that doesn't leave the table if you know what I mean? it's like a rocking oh, yeah. things yeah. i mean there's plenty of stuff like that uh it's available from toby and it's available from go cook outdoors as mm-hmm. well uh so give one of those guys a message to get one and uh, they're great customer service, fantastic presence, as you said. I mean, not only to people like us who are like massive like outdoor cook enthusiasts. I mean, I thought you'd say massive superstars. A, fr- yeah. a friend of ours who's just into camping. Like I just said to him, like I was talking about it, and I get quite passionate about it because I do enjoy. It. I love. I think it's a great bit of kit, and uh, and yeah. So he bought one, and and yeah, tr- revolutionized things mm. for him as well. Absolutely loves it. I just think like. Anyone really? I think we could great probably present. name about five people that aren't barbecue people that are just mm-hmm. not even home cooks. That are just people that like yeah. pizza. Yeah, people that from have work that have ended up buying them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right, and, and there's those other little accessories like the little sear plate and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll there's a lot more than pizza. I mean, that's just let's just before we move on, then let's just say okay, yeah. As well as pizza, you can do a heck lot more. I've done pitters, I've done kebabs. There's uh, sizzler pans that come with it now, all 
or you can an pay extra, an extra to like you can add on and get them but also you can buy sort of cast iron scissor pans from anywhere uh quite handy the other ones it's got little handles to get them in and out with which is quite handy but a good welding glove you don't need one mm. uh but yeah you can do steaks in there imagine like if you put the you put the scissor pan in there to get hot you bring the scissor pan out steak in so you, your cast iron's super hot steak's gone in steak goes into the uni you got a a major top heat and a super bomb heat mm. and you're talking like a, an amazing crust on a steak mm. cooked in like the perfect outside and still perfectly rare inside and and yeah so stuff like that seafood seafood anything sort of hot and fast because you're not going to be able to or in my opinion the the temperature control is not good enough to be able to restrict it to any sort of low and slow cook i know with big wood fired ovens people can build their fire slowly and, and sort of, yeah. and take, uh, if they've built it too much, they can take stuff out and this and that, and they can they can modify it for temperature. But in the uni, the unit's a bit small, and once your fire's built, it's built, you can't really do a lot with it. So I just think that there's not a lot of temperature control, so you can't go for anything like that in it. But saying that, anything hot and fast, uh, why not go yeah. for it? Go for it. So uni, more than just a pizza oven. We should talk to them soon, get some more details on it. I'm already on it. Uh, next up, something that I've seen a massive rise in, neither of us have actually got one at the moment, but we've both cooked on them and loved them, is the drum smoker. And we've had Danny on the show talking about his uh, Bristol drum smokers and uh, a bunch of swines when we went to their cookery class. They they were cooking on their drums. They use them all the time now, don't they? Is yeah. this the gateway? Yeah, they have they have a gateway yeah. and they've got a uh, big proper s- BPS, I think. I think they've got big proper smoky as well. So yeah. that's what I think. I might be wrong. Yeah, so we can, I can't. They got a ga- they definitely got a gateway. Yeah, definitely brought those over, didn't they? So mm-hmm. They are awesome. We can't say huge amounts about them. I love the appearance; like they just look so cool. I love the like the style of cooking and there's big uprising people getting them. So and you mentioned something. A minute ago which is quite cool is that like yeah you think back like two years ago to grill stock you went to grill stock and yeah there's hardly any there's like hardly any drums there at the time but then this year almost like every other i don't know if it's that many but it seemed like a lot there was a lot of people cooking on drums now and i don't remember seeing anywhere near that many people cooking on drums yeah before. just in general posts on sort of like forums like country wood smoke etc you see uh a lot of drum smokers in the background now and people using drum smokers for their cooks and stuff, so and definitely. We even made one, didn't we? We did a demo with Simon yeah, yeah. Dyer and helped him build one, which he then yeah, raffled Simon off. Simon does so a, a, a drum in a day, so yeah. pretty cool. Pretty much a drum in an hour, wasn't it? I think he did it that quickly. It was pretty impressive. So yeah, drum smoker is way up there on my list of things to get soon and... See, when I keep seeing them on Facebook, of everyone getting them, they make me very jealous. Especially Danny's ones with the colours. I love those like anodized, purple anodized red colours. They look really, yeah, really see. classy. And the artwork he's doing on some of them yeah, are amazing yeah. as well. So I mean, a uh, bunch of swines had a really cool one. Uh, I've mm. seen a few now that have been super cool. Mm. Right, next up, I don't think we could go without mentioning some sort of rubs and stuff like what we've been using this year um we don't use huge amounts of commercial rubs we tend to make a lot of our own stuff but there's been a couple of things that stuck out for me this year which i don't i don't really like they are rubs but i don't always class them as rubs to be honest because the the first one i'll mention is the one by dizzy pig and it got introduced to me on the podcast, and it was when we had Richard from Barbecue Gourmet on. He said he, we were like going through all the products on the shop, and he recommended the one called Pineapple Head. And it's it's a it's really a, I, can't, I I use it mostly for desserts to be honest, and it's like become my choice of topping. I put it on top of um, my pineapple upside down cake. It goes into that now. Uh, last night I made some Hasselback apples and used it on that. And it's got quite a like it's a sugary, cinnamony. I don't really know what's in it. It just says spices, but it's got a really nice flavour to it. And like, cinnamon and sugar are the <laughs> key ingredients I could say that jump out of it. Something fruity in there, some sort of lemoniness, I think. But 
it's a really nice flavour and it works really well. I put it on top of like a peach cobbler as well. And I have used it now and again in like barbecue sauces and stuff that I've made as well, just to give it a different level of flavour. But I just quite like having something that looks barbecue. It looks like a rub, mm -hmm. but it's something I can use in my desserts as well. Yeah, cool. And then the other one, which was introduced to me when we went on Bunch of Swine's uh, competition class, was Hallelujah, spelt with a J, like <laughs> Jalalujah. <laughs> um, and that one's by Big Popper, and that's it's basically a jalapeno salt. And I don't don't use it as a thing on its own, really. I tend to use that as my salt, so when I'm... When there's a recipe that's like got so much salt in it, then I'm quite often using my jalapeno salt instead as a like different like different flavor profile, mm -hmm. and also just as a like just a seasoning on the top of things. Just at the end, you normally, you normally like sprinkle a little salt and pepper on at the end. I quite often just a little sprinkling of my jalapeno salt. Yeah, get a little bit See, of chili and everything. I, I remember eat. trying it, but I can't remember 100 percent what it was like. I, I make smoked salt, and I make like a. a a lemon and lime zest salt as well, which I really like, and it mm. is just basically it's salt. Kind of like that, salt. Really, yeah. Is it? Is it just? Are there any bits of jalapeno in it, or is it just what? What is? Is it literally a yeah, salt? So my smoked salt is just salt. It, so it must have. Yeah, it must have okay. some actual jalapeno in it. But yes. Yeah, but it is do you like a salt. Yeah, it looks. Like that's just flavoured with some yeah. jalapeno through it. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Well, yeah, and gonna have to give a shout out to the the british rub producers as well there's some british rub producers which are doing some amazing things and and mm. they're also available uh at go cook outdoors mm -hmm. they're selling some bits and pieces and also john gower john gower oh, is yeah. his stuff on go cook outdoors i think it might be not sure not sure well john gower from mm. quiet waters farm has a amazing an array so of many rubs, rubs no. i'm very lucky enough i won uh oh i see I want to get his new jerk rub he's developed. So I'm getting a sample of that. I saw that he posted online to like comment or something and I suddenly saw it. I was like, oh, oh, quick, I'll comment and realised it was like the day before and already about 140 other people had already commented. So yeah. Well, when I commented, I it. like about, I don't know, about 50 other people had done it and I was like, uh, I'm a bit late to the party, but yeah, I'd love one if if there's any going. But then, like he he announced, I read earlier on that he was going to do a draw the next day, so I was like, okay, could have a chance. And then uh, I was lucky enough to. He wasn't very happy. He was like, well, not like you don't get enough free stuff. Here's something else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't really get a lot of free stuff, so I'm very happy. Yeah, you do. Love do you? it. Absolutely love it. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to trying that. Uh, really looking forward to running against the. Jerk. Yeah, but what was it called? It was called uh, the yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, the one from Oak Ridge, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The Oak Ridge Range Jarlove. They Jarlove. had a jerk. We tried that at the Big Meat. Mm. Uh, Richard was there with some of the the uh, Jarlove, and uh, we tried some of that, and that was absolutely yeah. lush. I know we haven't really had it properly, have we? We, no. we just tasted a little bit on our finger mm -hmm. from the packet. But it keeps coming back to me as like mm. something we always talk about. Yeah. So we do need to get that again. Definitely need to get that. Jar love. And uh, maybe give that a try with uh, with John's as well mm. and see see what we like, see the differences and give some feedback. Put it up against our own as well. Got yeah. a uh, little jerk rub in our Alfresco yeah. Christmas book. Oh, that should be on the list. What are we thinking? Well... Let's just we'll let's leave that. Not self promote. Let's, okay, yeah. let's carry on with yeah, the Other people. books are available, but that <laughs> one's especially available at the moment. Yeah. And it's Christmas themed, so <laughs> we should give it a mention, I suppose. But yeah, there are plenty of books out there. Let's just have a quick note on books, then, I suppose. I mean, uh, Alfresco Christmas. Alfresco Christmas. Ben and Dan. There's another one, Alfresco Christmas. Yeah. There's one by that Ben and Dan that do the podcast, the ones that are on My Kitchen Rules on Channel 4. All right. What's that called? That's. Alf, I think that's Al Fresco Christmas. Okay, yeah. I saw this one uh, that went to number one in Amazon's bestseller chart. Quite oh a yeah, bit. and uh, it was called. Is that was Al that Fresco the, Christmas? Oh, yeah, 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 that was Al Fresco Christmas. Yeah, yeah we, we won't put it on a list though because we don't want to self-promote. So. No, 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 no. So next up is smoking, smoking wood. wood. Yes. So we're obviously big lovers of smoke with Shaq. Yeah. And James uh, quite often sorts us out and yeah. uh, looks after us and keeps us smoking. At all times. 
He provides the smoky goodness. We provide the talent. Well, Ooh, I say well, we, but I provide the talent. Me, yeah. You just mess things up. Anyway, so <laughs> with smoking wood, yeah. So uh, smoking wood, really, like there's no there's no new wood that's suddenly been invented, is there? That's come out this year that we can talk about, really. But for me, I feel like I'm starting to like find my flavour a bit. I think that at the start of the year, I was kind of really just dabbling with a little bit of everything and still do still got loads of variety there but i'm starting to like go to certain woods now and i'm finding myself like thinking i think well, maybe i've found my flavor a bit so like i'm primarily using pear when i'm doing like poultry stuff and then hickory is my kind of go-to wood that i kind of just think just is a default wood which will just works and then cherry is my beautiful coloring wood that i like to use so, but between those three that tends to be my like primary mixture i do dabble in a bit of oak now and again because i feel like i should keep more british and that's my like way of doing so so what, where are you at with your woodies well firstly like wood wood is for any sort of barbecue wood is always an awesome present i yeah. mean it's a quite a cheap one to be honest compared to a lot of other stuff that we mm. all buy uh, smoking wood's quite a cheap option. If you're going to ask, if you're going to put stuff on a list or ask friends for stuff or buy stuff for each other, it's quite a nice one to do because we always need it. My wife was laughing much. at me the other day actually because you know, like when you're a kid, it's a nightmare, isn't it? To your Santa's going to give you coal this year. Yeah. <laughs> or not for me. <laughs> Dream come true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Coal and a lump of wood. So a lump of wood or, and a lump of coal, and yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. So he's I mean, happy it's, it's when a great he's got wood. <laughs> That's too jazzy, but I always tend to have wood. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I just find I just think it's a great, great gift all around. But but yeah, with you similarly, I, I am tending to to lean more towards the fruit woods personally. Yeah. I find them more versatile. I find, but I don't often think they are maybe the perfect thing for the job. So I tend to stop. I tend to have a lot of fruit wood around me. Mm. In the fact that I find that they go with a lot of things, but then also have some more like sort of specialist woods that I tend to think go with particular things. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm always mixing now. I used to example. Of a specialist I used to uh, like grapevine, for instance. Yeah. So what, I used what do you to go with that one. Can I just finish my sentence? Sorry, one second. I like grapevine as well. I've got some. What did you use yours with? I've tried it with lamb, and I've tried it with beef. Okay. Well, like, I'm just saying stuff like, for instance, silver birch, for instance, which isn't, well, is it special? I don't know. Where else Where else can you get it from? Where else sells it? Smoke with Jack does it, but mm. does many places do it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't look anywhere else. No. <laughs> so, I mean, there's particular things that I like to use for particular stuff. So, I do buy those things, but as a general go-to, now I'm using fruit woods as, mm. as, as a sort of standard. But I tend to mix more than what I used to yeah I think I don't know why I didn't used to but I think that going back sort of last year I probably used like if I was using oak for a cook I'd use oak for a cook if I was using Mm. cherry for a cook I'd use cherry for a cook yeah but I'm tending to mix more now I I don't think I ever really cook with just one wood now to be honest but uh, yeah and I don't know like yeah anyway I have another thing I have had I guess it's Classed as specialist, it, I had some olive wood this year as well, and yeah. orange. So and what did you find that? How did you find them? Just, I think the olive wood was very similar to the grapevine. I think to be honest, like that's what it reminded me of. It like physically looked and felt like the similar sort of weight and texture of it, and just felt like it's similar sort of smoke that came from mm-hmm. it. But I liked I liked it because it's a, as as most of these are like they're sustainable woods and they're produced in sustainable ways so it's all good for me. My f- probably one of my favourite gadgets that I've had this year and people know this because I've made a couple of videos using it is got to be the Jotisserie. Oh, please! I've waited me. waited oh, so sorry. long for the Jotisserie. Uh-huh. Ever since I, I think before I even had my Kamara Joe. I remember one second. Yeah, no, I spent the whole day doing something. Yeah, for you to get it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah sorry. Carry on. I was there as well, but thanks for that. Yeah, I didn't. That was. Yeah, I don't remember getting anything. But your payment was me bringing in some food that I cooked on my duty three. 
Oh. I think I brought you something. I can't remember now. It was a while yeah. ago. I probably didn't hear anyway. Just, just watch the video. You get the idea. I t- oh, try not to, to be honest. I've seen too many. What a beast. What a beast. So, yeah, Joe Tissery is a long-awaited gift for me. Like I've, I've wanted it since before I even had my Kamado Joe. I'd seen it, like, bounded around. It's weird. It was like, the, it's like the mystery. Yeah, it was like <laughs> a mystery because, like, all these people, well, not all these people, like, people were releasing videos of the Joe Tissery using the Joe Tissery, but, like, you couldn't buy it anywhere. It wasn't for sale. No. Yeah, it wasn't anywhere. Like, you, even when you, like, search for it on the web, there was just no mention. No. Of it. The only time you'd see it is if... Someone posted like a little Instagram clip or something using it, and it was just always this: Is it ever going to really surface? Is it a real thing or not? Yeah, like it was almost at the point where it was just like a, a prototype they were sending around to sort of big names in the barbecue world and getting them to do a video or so with it. Mm. But and then I got one. Yeah, so big, then big we know that the they weren't doing world. that anymore. So they're just giving it to any old any old Joe. So I'm not Joe. I'm Ben. It's fine. I see. I don't even know your name. Oh. It's all good. All right, well, next up. No, 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 talk more about the Joe. Talk more about the Joe Tissery, please. I know, I don't go on about it if it's boring you. No, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I like it. I think it's What makes it any different to any other Well, it's the only rotisserie that will fit in a Kamado Joe. Uh, mm, Yeah, well, there's that Carson Radizio, but I can't really class it as the same. You can't shut the lid on the Kamado and be able to cook. In, on a rotisserie with the lid closed using like the benefits that you're gaining from having a ceramic oven as well of keeping the moisture locked in so like, for me it's just the perfect solution for that I love how silent the motor is that you sometimes it's maybe even like a disadvantage being that silent I guess because sometimes a couple of times I've forgot to switch it back on after turning it off and realized after about five minutes that one side of the uh Chicken was cooked a lot more than the rest. <laughs> but we turn it on and it's fine then. Um, but yeah, so it's awesome for keeping quiet when you're filming and stuff like that. It's perfect. You can have it running without it annoying anyone. And I guess for me, the only disadvantage, as with something which we should have put on this list actually, of the Loof Lighter, because I really like that this year. But. Mm. Um, the other like this there's two things which I love both of them. I think they both do the job amazingly well, but electricity at the end of my garden isn't something I have. Like I have to run extension lead and I just sometimes can't be bothered. So I'm gonna get power put down there and then it won't be an issue for me, but at the moment that's my only thing about any of these products is I'm out in the elements and I wanna be out in the elements and I don't want also, at the same time, how often do you want to replace batteries? You've got to imagine like, the jotisserie yeah. to rotisserie. I want it solar powered. Big things to so big cuts of meat. It's going to need like a strong power source. So I'd imagine batteries wouldn't wouldn't quite provide that. Like mm. or standard batteries. So you're talking like a, a a unique battery of some sort, and then you're talking about batteries dying and stuff like that. And the only way you I can make know. like the heat make it turn is an invention for you. Mm. You've already got heat generated in the bottom of the Kamado or whatever oven you're using. Can you generate power from heat? Can, can't you? Do it. Moving on. I'm not agreeing, <laughs> I'm not agreeing with that at all. Anyway, so can. the flipping grate is flipping great. my next one that I want to talk about, which is flipping grate. Yeah. Uh, oh. Got it. Absolutely love it. Oh, sending Ben to sleep. He's yawning over there. You probably a heard stretch. That. So. Probably heard that as he went oh, down the microphone. Yeah. Uh, right, flipping great. Absolutely love it. Uh, so basically, what the flipping great is is it has a unit that sits on top of your your barbecue. It's adjustable. Uh, it doesn't need to sit on top of barbecue. It can sit on sand. It can sit on grass. It can sit on whatever you want. Tabletop. I want one to put in my cat eye bowl. Yep, perfect for that. And then uh, what it has is it has a bar that comes up vertically and then the sort of grill s- sort of slides onto that and you can adjust it height wise it uses the weight of the what well, I said like the grill area the, the grid area it uses the weight of that to hold it where it is on the on the vertical pole uh, so then basically you've got to you've got like a cage square cage with a lid that you put on top to, so you can hold stuff in it I'm really struggling to describe what it is and then you can flip stuff over as well so basically without 
detaching it, you can turn stuff over and mm-hmm. cook both sides, adjusting up and down the pole to, to control your temperature. And it's just amazing. I've cooked things like fish. I've cooked pork belly. I've cooked steaks. I've cooked sausages. You name it, I've cooked it in the flipping grate, and I find it fantastic. It's another thing cake. similar to the uni that, yeah, uh, yeah, poured the cake batter into the into the grid and it just went onto the charcoal. So then I had dirty cake. It was fantastic. Anyway, so similar to the uni, what I was saying, it's another great thing that people... You do realise we're on air and you're like, what? I can hear you. Just itching. You've been doing it for like ages now. I think yeah. without realising, you're rubbing your beard all over the mic. <laughs> anyway. It's right. Christmas. It's my... Stop. Remember when we were going to play that stop, game stop, of guess the sound? Stop, 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 stop. Right. You've I'm ruined mid it now, talking. if we ever play that, people know what the mid-talking sound is Mid-talking, and you're like, I don't being weird over there. <laughs> Yawning, rubbing your beard on the mic, being super weird. Right, okay, flipping great. Everyone wants to have a go at it. It's like one of those things you set up and everyone wants, oh, well, it's sort of like, it annoyed me at first a bit, because I was like, I've just turned it, and it's cooking on that side, and someone's like, oh, can I have a go at flipping it? Like, well, not really, because I'm trying to cook here, so... <laughs> But at the same time, it's great to get people involved. Great, to, great to encourage people to want to get involved in cooking stuff. So, fantastic bit of kit. Absolutely love it. So simple, yet so effective. And I mean, never had pork belly like it. Mm. I think it's amazing. Yeah, and definitely. cheap. Yeah, and can fit almost anything. Yeah, anyway, anything. Yeah, like, so or nothing that like you can. Yeah, put a fire on, on the, the floor, floor. Build a fire. You've got yeah. a cooking apparatus, and yeah, Bob's your uncle. Mm. So, next up for me would be the Caddi Fireball. Uh, I don't think it's maybe new this year, but it's like taken over the sort of. There's lots of people that have always had these like chimneys and stuff in the garden, and f- then moving on to like chimneys. fireball. Yeah, that's what they call it. You you weren't you're not you're not as sophisticated as me, but uh, people have those sort of things in the garden. Since the man rubbing his beard on the microphone. I was playing guess the sound. Get over it. Anyway, as I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, the cat eye fireball. <laughs> Don't interrupt me again. Stop rubbing your beard. Anyway, people like to sit around it. It makes a lovely centerpiece out in the garden. You can have it on the patio or on the lawn. I wouldn't recommend carrying it down the beach unless you get a small one because they're quite a hefty thing to manoeuvre around. Um, I set set You're it up. Weak as well, this. Well, I set it up on my own. You, I invited you around, but you were too tired, so didn't get an invite. That's awkward. <coughs> uh, so yeah, it's an awesome piece of kit. I love the tripod over the top of it, so you can stand that up over the top. You hang skillets off it. You can hang like a cooking bowl off it. Hang a Dutch oven off it. Like you can cook straight in it. It gives you a massive grill space if you get the like larger size one. I think I've got the 80 centimetre one. Um, that size, you've got a m- massive grill there to be grilling stuff on. And then if you use something like the flipping grate or something as well, so I'm thinking now that'd be awesome to sit that in there because it would sit perfectly inside it and give you that ability to lift up and down. It's similar, like, it's a similar sort of technique, I guess, to like having an asado, isn't it, really? Like that flipping grate style of cooking. So that you can have it closer or further away from the heat. There's a spider there. Yeah. That's weird. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Run! I suppose so. I suppose so. I get what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> uh, it's coming like right down on my like head. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I suppose so. Might be a false It's like the same as like you're talking about like perilla or something like that. You control the, the temperature by the <laughs> height away from the fire. So it's just any it's similar to anything that you're using sort of height as a way of controlling temperature. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I could say that even in my Pro-Q, like, because... Yeah, it is. The same thing, if I take my water pan out and I put something at the top of it, then I'm, I'm doing, like, sort of direct, like, mm. long-distance direct cooking. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just sort of, like, wherever you want it to be, to be honest. You're scared of it, aren't you? Next up on the awesomeness list from this year is... Um, I guess two products, really, but they go together so well is um, Pro-Q's new chimney starter and the afterburner. Yeah, well, for me, what really is on the list is the afterburner grill. And then 
some product that is awesome that has come out as well is their chimney starter. Mm. But the Afterburner grill works on the Weber, the large Weber uh, yeah, chimney starter. The same size, yeah. uh, and sort of any of that size. So it's quite versatile, really. And mm. also, I mean, I've got a couple of smaller ones that are just like the general chimney starters you can yeah, buy you can from still places. balance it on, can't you? And yeah, it just sits on top quite nicely mm. as well. So, But it fits absolute snug as a bug on top of the Weber one and the new Pro-Q chimney. Mm. So, so yeah. You're the, using for that me, quite often, aren't you? The really? Afterburner is like amazing. Mm. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Afterburner steaks, mm. incredible. I'm I'm the sort of guy though that loves a like a blue or rare steak. Mm. I'm I'm as rare as it get to be honest. Uh, <laughs> One but, of the kind. But yeah, so what the afterburner does is it allows me to achieve like super hot temperatures mm. directly on top of my chimney without having to use much fuel. So I'm not lying up my whole barbecue, uh, and I can bang steak after steak after steak after steak after steak mm. out on this chimney and absolutely perfectly cooked every time super hot so you're getting the absolutely amazing charred outside uh like the made it effect just absolutely just all over the outside of the steak and then you're getting an amazing rare inside still and and i think it's absolutely perfect yeah we were cooking in that way before weren't we like even it's on when we were on my kitchen rules weren't we when the, the weather was kicking off outside and we needed to get the asparagus done quickly we just chucked that on some grill grates and just stuck it straight on top of the chimney yeah. burn at the time. I mean, people still do that. I've seen people mm. do that who don't have one grill gate, grill gate, grill Easy grates to say. on top of the chimneys. That works as well, but, yeah, but what we're getting is, there, is right? yeah, and a, a thick bit of uh, metal that sits perfectly on top. I was hoping that you're going to have a Pro-Q logo burnt into your steak at the end. It, <sighs> it can be done but it's just not perfect. Like I've done it a few times, and it's and that has been what's come through. Yeah. But but yeah, not every time. Keep trying. Yeah. But then, uh, so their their chimney they've released is stainless steel. Yeah. So it's going to last a lot better than a lot of other ones mm. that rust over and just look mean and mm. not very nice. Yeah. Uh, it looks it's, really nice. There's big red handle on it as well. Yeah. Super cool. Big red handles look really cool. I like the way that the handles are as well. It's not mm. like the, yeah. do you know, you've got like the swingy thing that sort of yeah. sits on like the Weber that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This looks a bit more. Yeah. A bit more robust, robust. A bit more. Yeah. Good position. Right. Well, something we've done this year, which I think was awesome. And I think everyone should try and get to something like this, um, is a competition class or backyard style class for barbecue. We were lucky enough to go along to the Bunch of Swines one, which was amazing. Uh, I know that they've got some more dates coming up, I think, for their um, ones in the future. If you go on Barbecue Gourmet on their website, they um, they have a list on there of like days when they're doing it. I think that I'm not sure. I was just trying to see if I could see any dates on there, but I can't see at the moment exact dates. But if you go onto their website. There's like details of how you can book onto it. There's plenty of there's like other teams that are doing them as well, but that's one we've been to and can wholeheartedly yeah. recommend that to anyone. I mean, those guys are killing it. Bunch of swines, absolutely killing it in the KCBS world. They're smashing things. They're getting perfect 180s on brisket. They're they're just amazing. They're doing super cool stuff. And what I found absolutely amazing was was that actually over the course of the weekend we learned how to do how to prepare and make competition style barbecue in two styles low and slow and hot and fast because mm. they've recently gone across and made the decision that they're cooking everything hot and fast now mm. and still smashing it by the way uh but what we learned we learned how to do both things both ways and actually got to sample things in from both ways as well mm. it was absolutely yeah, amazing like, i just felt normally like get in that sort of position no. could you really I think it just allows you to then go and make your informed decision yourself, what you preferred, what you liked. And and I thought it was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic opportunity. We really learnt loads. Uh, Ed and Emma are absolutely amazing people. And another great thing, I don't know about any others, but I know about this one, is you've got Barbecue Gourmet, Richard, sat at the back of the room with all of the products that the guys use. So when you're learning about stuff and 
and you're learning about the rubs and you're learning about like some of the equipment and stuff they use Richard sat back there with with everything ready to go so you can actually go back and buy it there and then yeah I don't know if it's a good thing or not to be honest mate <laughs> made me spend so much more money that day <laughs> but yeah, yeah you go up there you taste some amazing food you, you see the techniques you see the tools of the trade and you're like oh, I need that now and Richard's got it there you're saving yourself going home ordering it waiting for it to get posted he's got everything you need straight there and you just yeah. get it take it away with you so I've, that's where I picked up that um, hallelujah rub actually mm, cool but I have just found a date 2nd of April that's the next one. Oh, wicked so mm. people could do that literally mm. just before our competition mm, yeah and then they could be up there Q-Fest Q-Fest so yeah guys any new teams that are looking to uh, to compete in the scene this year get on board with that but a bunch of swines competition class uh they are killing it in in kcbs competitions in in europe and around the world this year so uh yeah check that out book on and then you come with some fresh knowledge for the q fest which is going to be in devon yeah so we haven't mentioned that on the podcast yeah we but we'll, no um, more details are coming out this week basically we'll have like full full details as much as we can give yeah. out as possible we'll be out this week for Q Fest. Mm -hmm. um, just follow our social media, check out, we'll post it as soon as we're ready. Have a little mini website set up for it and you can check it all out and start applying now if you want to mm -hmm. compete. That's um, uh, for competition teams, that's yeah. for judges' course. We're running a KCBS judges' course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you want to be involved, then get involved. If you are already a KCBS judge, you want to register an interest to be a judge at the event, then you can also register your interest there. Uh yeah. So and it's, we're not we're not just doing the KCBS stuff as well, are we? We're doing some extra rounds as well. Yeah, yeah. So we have a SCA steak cook-off. We yeah. have a uh, chili cook-off. Yeah. We have a chef's choice seafood. Yeah. We have a chef's choice bacon, and we have the ultimate burger round. Every single round, every single ancillary round qualifies for the World Food Championships. That's awesome. Yeah, you've. We talked about this already, and I kind of already knew it. But then when you talked to me about it today, you couldn't, suddenly you couldn't I was grasp like, it. What, you every single you really one. Struggled. We, I was just thinking, it's only certain ones, but it's every single one. So and there's five opportunities to be qualified yeah. for World Food mm -hmm. Championships. Yep, and KCBS and points. KCBS points, and. There's actually six opportunities to go to the World Food Championships from QFest because they've agreed. I need to 100% confirm this, but they have agreed that our barbecue round will qualify for the barbecue uh, round at the World Food Championships as well. So six we will have chances, six, quali yeah. six chances to qualify to compete at six different rounds at the World Food Championships. So amazing sort of news. Uh, and as well as having our our winner of the KCBS event, we will also have a Q Fest United Crew Q Grand Champion, which will include all of the ancillary rounds. So it's real, real incentive for everyone to get out there and compete their heart out in every single round and, and try the hardest they can. Mm. Should make for an awesome two days full of, uh, full of amazing food. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it's on a brewery. Yeah. And we are on a brewery. <laughs> Uh, so, last yeah. thing on the list. It's uh, your new board, which I'm really quite jealous about. Yeah, a bit of a last minute one, but the Cutworks uh, chopping board. board. Uh, basically, chopping board with bonuses. Yeah, so you get this frame mm -hmm. with a tray that sits in it, mm -hmm. and then a chopping board sits on top. There are three little holes at the front of the chopping board. So, mm -hmm. you are chopping, so say you're chopping an onion, you remove the skin really annoying i've recently settled to having like a plastic bag with me next to my chopping board and i just chuck my rubbish in the plastic bag and then or else you're forever turning around and walking to the bin and doing this doing that so what this does is it that tray underneath acts as your bin so you just scoop everything down into these free holes and that's your bin you then also have spaces you can go along the top or along to one side uh, you can put trays for prepped items so say you're doing the onions first you chop your onions, your rubbish goes into the front of the tray, your onions go into one of the small trays at the back, 
and then you move on to your mushrooms. Mushrooms, you discard your bits you don't want in the in the front of the tray, straight into the waste area, and then you put your chopped mushrooms into their separate container at the back. And again, you can have as many small containers or big containers as you want. And also, in terms of like plating up and stuff, if there's certain elements or like a numerous amount of elements to a dish that you're putting together on a plate, it's a really nice way to be able to plate up. So you can have all your different elements spread between the dishes around your cutting board and then your plate can be in the middle and then you can actually start placing things together even like mm. down to making burgers and stuff constructing mm. burgers so if you've got all your different elements all mm. laid out properly it makes sort of that constructing a burger really really quite mm. an easy job and fun job i think i even saw that you can use the back as like a stand so i've seen i think in a photo there was someone like put their ipad on it so they could like what <laughs> watch a video or see the recipe or something Mm. on your chopping board yeah <laughs> and that tray just slides out from so did i said you can have uh like trays like around the the both sides of the mm. end so your tray for your waist just slides out that one end that has nothing on it yeah. it's got all of your uh stuff that you want to discard straight into the bin you take the tray to the bin pour it in the bin and then you've, you you saw it yeah, so don't. it just efficiency and sort of stuff like that in the kitchen is just mm. a, an amazing thing I absolutely love it. Think it looks super cool. Mm. Uh, great fun to use. Great bit of kit. Yeah, super impressed. Super so impressed. It's cut works. Yeah, cut works. Get onto cut works, guys, and you'll mm. check out their boards. And uh, yeah, I just think absolutely amazing. I'll probably chat about it more. Mm. I've only yeah, just got so, it, so, yeah. so yeah, I'll talk more. about it more over the coming sort of weeks. But yeah, check it out, guys. Cool. Well, that's it. That's our top ten. Things I think there's more than ten there because I think we digressed a bit, but there's loads of stuff there. We'll best when we put the podcast out, we've put in the description all the ten different things that we mentioned, so that you can get links to ways to buy them and so you can remember them, get easy access to them. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. And yeah, awesome, awesome. I was going to say Merry Christmas, but we've got more podcasts yet. Don't jump the gun. Yeah, on. we are feeling Christmassy, though. Yeah. So Merry, Merry flipping great Christmas. You filthy animals. We love you, really. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We've recorded yet another awesome podcast to get you over hump day. As always, we're brought to you by ProQ, Barbecue Gourmet, Kamado Joe, and Smokewood Shack, our awesome sponsors. ProQ is dedicated to providing you with quality smoking products with top-notch service and free advice for beginners to pitmasters. You can find them on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram under ProQ Smokers. So if you're thinking about buying your first smoker, wanting to upgrade or looking for some charcoal cabinet smokers, then check them out over at Max Barbecue. Barbecue Gourmet is devoted to promoting real barbecue and supplying the UK and Europe with top championship winning barbecue rubs, sauces, marinades and accessories from the United States and around the world. You can find them on Twitter and online under Barbecue Gourmet. So regardless of how you cook, whether it's on charcoal, wood, gas or electric, the real taste of summer could be yours all year round. And Kamado Joe is renowned for build quality and innovation from smoking, roasting or searing. Kamado Joe is the premium ceramic grill chosen by Michelin star chefs and barbecue enthusiasts alike. Get that great barbecue taste and keep the moisture locked in. Check them out on kamadojoe.co.uk and on Facebook and Twitter. And finally, Smokewood Shack delivers you quality smoking wood every time. They provide the smoky goodness, you provide the talent. So if you're looking for quality smoking wood chunks, dust, chips or planks, then head on over to smokewoodshack.com or you can find them online at smokewoodshack, not online, at Twitter. Twitter at smokewoodshack. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. And let's just say for today that I'm the best barbecue cook.